First, thank you so much for 100 subscribers. It really means so much to me that so many people want to support us. I know, we got here over two months ago, and we even got to 110, but I've been pretty busy with school, so I haven't been able to make a video until now. This video will be more about our plans for the future, since there hasn't been a whole lot of progress with TVC in the past three months, at least not enough to make a whole video about it. This will also be the first video with my face. Hi, I'm Aaron, the Motex Space Dude. First, let's talk about what we have done with TVC in the past three months. Since the last video, over three months ago, we've slightly changed the design. The last design was pretty good, but it had one big problem. If you go into the CAD and look at it from the top, you can still see part of the servo sticking out from the outer arc. This is happening with both servos on both of the rings. This is really bad because the arc is supposed to conform with the inside of the body tube, so this actually wouldn't fit inside the rocket. Another problem is the thickness of the platform where the servo is supposed to attach to. This is the outer ring from the last design, and you can see it can flex a lot, and it's actually already broken because it's so thin. The pushing and pulling from the servo motor to the motor mount would cause this to flex a lot and cause some error in the direction of the motor mount. The last problem is the servo mount. We wanted these little boxes to house the servo motors and then screw them into the rings, but it's just easier if it's all one part. This is the new design. First, we'll look at the outer ring. Probably the most apparent difference is the thickness of the ring itself. Originally, we had this cutout section here to allow room for the inner ring, but this is unnecessary, so we just extended that arc to the rest of the ring. Also, the outer circumference goes all the way around without a cutout section. The most important difference, though, is the servo platform. You can see it's a lot thicker, but also the outside of it shares the same arc as the main ring part. This is to address the flexing problem. Now, since it conforms with the tube, it allows us to screw it in from the outside to get rid of all the flexing. This also means the servo won't be on the outside of the ring anymore, but on the inside. I also added these little platforms and these paddle things. The paddles keep the inner ring from sliding side to side, which was a problem in the last design. The platforms, as you may have guessed, holds the servo. This replaces the servo box. Not much was done on the inner ring. All I did was add those servo platforms and increase its diameter slightly to allow for more rotation of the motor mount. Flexing is still a bit of a problem, but we can fix that later. One more thing, we still don't have a name for this rocket, so comment any suggestions. That's pretty much it with TVC for now. Now, on to some other things we have planned. A few months ago, we flew our altimeter for the first time and we got some data from it. Data or data? However, we have yet to validate that data. What we want to do is fly it with the altimeter again and somehow get the altitude data from a different source. We still haven't figured that out yet, but that's actually not the reason why we haven't flown the altimeter again since then. As the Zephyr Jr. rocket was coming down from the last altimeter flight, the shock cord disconnected from the rocket. I 3D printed this new shock cord anchor and screwed an eye bolt to it. So I rebuilt the rocket and flew it again. The next launch, without the altimeter, the shock cord held in, but the parachute didn't open, probably because it was stuffed into the rocket for a long time. The rocket was in good enough condition, so we flew it again, and unfortunately I cut the video early, but the shock cord did not hold. The rocket fell, kinking it, and tearing off a fin. Since the body tube was now kinked, I just decided to cut the rocket with a saw. I glued the anchor to the bottom half, then 3D printed a coupler and glued that above the anchor. There are a few reasons why this is now stronger. First is that the anchor was directly glued in. The first time I glued it in, I had to apply glue to its circumference, then slide it in. It's a little hard to explain with words, but this means glue was lost as I was sliding it in, so there wasn't enough glue for a strong bond. Another reason is that now the anchor is pushed to the top centering ring. This means the anchor isn't just glued to the body tube, but also that centering ring. The third reason is that when the anchor gets pulled up by the shock cord, the coupler provides extra resistance because it's also glued in. The coupler also strengthens the area that was kinked. Next, I want to build a rocket out of a PVC pipe. I already fully designed it a year ago and I have all the parts to build it, but I just haven't gotten around to building it. There's a bunch of reasons why this is a bad idea, but that just makes it more exciting. This is the open rocket file. The body tube will be a 3 foot long, 1.5 inch PVC pipe which actually means the inner diameter is 1.6 inches and the outer diameter is 1.9 inches, which makes sense. The nose cone, centering rings, and three fins will be 3D printed. This is probably the biggest reason why this project isn't a great idea. Joining PVC together requires a special glue, which might not work on these 3D printed parts. We'll have to figure that one out. What will help, though, are the rail buttons, which are for guiding the rocket along the rail guide during launch. These just screw into the rocket, so we can screw them in through the PVC pipe and they'll go through to the centering rings and help hold them in. The parachute will be a giant 36 inch diameter chute, 
because we don't want a heavy PVC pipe falling out of the sky. The shock cord will attach to an eye bolt on the top centering ring, so that's a pretty strong attachment we shouldn't need to worry about. We don't want this rocket to go super high or fast, so the motor we're going to use is the Cesaroni F-59. Max altitude will only be about 450 feet, and max velocity 100 miles an hour, the exact opposite of this next rocket. Lastly, we have Mach Machine. This was supposed to be a supersonic rocket, but when we launched it in March, the fins broke off about a third of a second into launch, which caused the rocket to lose control. We then did a bunch of testing to figure out why this happened, then built a stronger version. We were planning to launch the improved version, and then something really bad happened. I wanted to get something in this bag up here, and the rockets are right below it. The problem is, the bag is a drawstring bag, so when I pulled it down, the strings caught on the Zephyr Jr., which pulled it to the ground, and that pushed Mach Machine on the ground. Thankfully, the Zephyr Jr. rocket was fine, but Mach Machine's nose gun was damaged and two fins broke off. However, I already wasn't super confident with this design. Gluing plastic fins onto a cardboard body probably isn't super strong, plus the fins started bending after just sitting for a few months with no stress on them. The top of the body tube was also not in great condition after crashing in the flight back in March. I felt if I just started over, I can build a much stronger design. First of all, I wanted to change the fins to be made of balsa wood. I didn't want to use balsa on the original design because the standard sheets are usually pretty thick and I wanted super thin fins. But I found 2mm thick balsa sheets on Amazon. Balsa is much better than 3D printed PLA because it's much less dense, can't bend much, and can be strongly attached to a cardboard body tube with wood glue. There will now be 3 fins rather than 4 which will decrease drag. I didn't want to do this in the original design because I thought it would keep the stability margin higher. But actually, if you have three fins and just add more nose weight, you can achieve the same stability margin, but also achieve a higher velocity. I'll also paper the fins, which is basically putting paper on the side of a fin to make it stronger. Another thing I want to do with the fins is to airfoil them, or basically sand them to make them more aerodynamic. I also slightly changed the fin shape, which was to better optimize for the new design. Now, they're more swept back, and the root cord, or the area of the fin that attaches to the rocket, is now shorter. The next thing I want to do is add fin fillets. This is basically a curved surface from the fin to the body tube that increases the strength of the fin attachment and improves aerodynamics. Because of this, I also moved up the fins a little to allow for the fillet to wrap around the back of the fin. Thanks to Walter from DIY Aerospace, the author of the Apogee article about making supersonic rockets, who commented on the last mock machine video that I should do this. Even though I referenced the article in the other video, I did almost nothing the article said to do. Now for the redesign, I want to do almost everything it says to do. The next thing I did was I changed the body tube. As I said before, the top of the body tube had started to fray. The new body tube will be two 29mm thick walled tubes from Abogee, which will lengthen the body tube by 2 inches for a total of 14 inches. The last design change is the nose cone. Although the ogive shape works fine, I wanted it to be even better. The new nose cone shape will have the same length and width, but it's a von Karman shape rather than an ogive. An ogive is created by the overlap section of two circles. The von Karman, though, comes from a series of shapes called the Hack series, which uses a mathematical formula specifically designed to create a more aerodynamic shape. The new nose gun will still be 3D printed, but it'll be hollow to reduce weight. The new estimated velocity from the sim is now Mach 1.31, which is Mach 0.13 faster than the old design, and nearly 1,000 miles an hour. It's a bit overkill, but why not? More importantly, though, the new design is much stronger. I haven't started to build it yet, but I hope to launch it when our club opens back up in the next two months. That's it for now. Again, thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers. See you guys next time.